I understand now that the Aeronautique was one of the more peculiar plane manufacturers of interwar France, though it is also one of the somewhat more obscure. Arsenal was a state company which was created towards the end of 1934. Its goal at the time was to provide a way to train aviation engineers employed by the French state and help them evaluate design proposals. It would also be tasked with studying aircraft designs without the profitability constraints of a private company, meaning that Arsenal would be typically used to study experimental projects and not necessarily those meant to see mass production. Nonetheless, it would end up producing what should have become one of the most common French fighters had not France been defeated in 1940, the VG-33. Hello, and welcome to another Plain Encyclopedia Voice article. I'm your host, Butain, and today I'll be covering the Arsenal VG-33, perhaps the highest performing French fighter that was about to enter French service in 1940. The timeline of the VG-33's predecessors tends to be somewhat unclear. It is generally considered that the fighters hold their roots in tandem engine designs, which were being studied at the request of the French state in the mid to late 1930s. The VB-10, which would be manufactured post-war, was one result of these studies. However, orders to design such tandem wing designs appear to date from 1937 according to some sources, while a mock-up of the VG-33's direct predecessor, the VG-30, appeared in November of 1936. In any case, the engineers of Arsenal, led by lead engineer Michel Denis, presented the new plane at the 15th Paris Air Show in November 1936. The design they had worked on appears to date from early 1936 and was an attempt to compete with earlier contemporary fighter designs, such as the MS-405 or LN-161. This aircraft will be designated the Arsenal de l'Aeronautique VG-30. The VG-30 mock-up, which was first presented at the Paris Air Show, was a low cantilever wing monoplane powered originally by the Pote 12DC 610 horsepower inline engine. The plane was to use an almost exclusively wooden construction, which would save on cost and strategic resources, though this would prove less so the case than expected when it was found that France lacked the spruce wood reserves to build the aircraft and had to purchase large quantities abroad. It had a capable armament of one 20mm HS404 cannon firing through the propelled hub and four wing-mounted 7.5mm MAC-34 machine guns. The wings had a surface of 14 square meters. When first unveiled, the VG-30 had a very modern appearance and drew considerable interest from France's air ministry. So much so that, in 1937, the air ministry set requirements for a competition, the A-23, for French air designers to offer light fighter aircraft designs. This opened up some competition to the VG-30, which would materialize in several prototypes, such as the Blope MB-700, the SNCAO, CAO-200, the Roussel R-30. One design, Cauldron's C-714, would enter production. Arsenal worked on adapting their VG-30 to these requirements, and then manufactured a prototype. Manufacturing of this prototype started during the summer of 1937, and faced some considerable delays. Notably, the Pote engine could not be delivered, which pushed the Arsenal designers to switch to another design, Hispano Suiza's 12X CRS, which would provide a considerable power increase up to 690 horsepower. This change would start the association between Arsenal's VG-30 series fighters and Hispano Suiza inline engines. The prototype of the VG-30 had its first flight on the 15th of October 1938. They would still have to wait several months for official state trials, in which some subsequent modifications were made to the aircraft. In July of 1939, the state trials were undertaken. The VG-30 proved to have decent performance for a light fighter with a Hispano Suiza power plant that was not the most powerful of those available. It had up to a maximum speed of 485 km per hour in level level flight. In a dive, the VG-30 was found to reach 805 kilometers an hour. The VG-30 had been found to be a rather capable design, however there was still room for improvement. 
This was done by designing the VG31. An issue with the VG30 was that the radiator was fairly far forward. Being further in front than the cockpit, it was found not to be ideal for the plane's aerodynamic profile. The VG31 had its radiator moved back by 2 meters and also had the wing surface reduced by 2 square meters. A more powerful engine was fitted in the form of the Hispano Suiza 12Y31 860 horsepower inline engine, which did not, however, feature a 20mm gun firing through the propeller hub. Two of the wing machine guns were also removed, with only two 7.5mm MAC-34s remaining as armament. The VG-31 never flew. It appears that the fuselage was built, but was then converted to a VG-33, which also never flew, but was used as a model upon which to base production. Wind tunnel trials of the VG-31 showed that its reduced wingspan resulted in aerodynamic instability. Its reduced armament was also a major issue. However, its radiator, pushed back to the rear, appeared to be a good design choice in order to reduce drag and improve the aerodynamic profile of the series. In designing a more advanced version, the best parts of the VG-30 and VG-31 were combined. The new fighter, the VG-33, would combine the wingspan and armament of the VG-30 with the fuselage and engine of the VG-31. This was also modified to mount a 20mm HS-404 firing through the propeller hub. Production of the VG-33 prototype started in 1938, and the prototype took flight for the first time on the 25th of April 1939. The official trials would last from July of 1939 to March of 1940 and were generally very positive. The VG-33 was designed using a largely wooden construction, made mostly of spruce. Almost all of the plane's internal structure was wooden, and then given the plywood skin. The VG-33 used a semi-monocoque fuselage and a one-piece wing structure. The plane had a wingspan of 10.80 meters, with each wing having a surface of 14 square meters. The plane was 8.55 meters long and 3.55 meters high. Empty, it would weigh around 2,050 kilograms. When loaded, it would weigh around 2,680 kilograms in standard configuration. The VG-33's landing gear deployed outward. The VG-33 used the Hispano Suiza 12Y31. This was a V12 engine producing 860 horsepower maximum at a critical altitude of 3,320 meters and at 2,400 RPM. This engine was fitted with a three-bladed Chavier variable pitch propeller with a diameter of 2.95 meters. This propeller would rotate at up to 1,600 RPM. The water radiator was located below the cockpit and was recessed into the fuselage as a way to reduce drag as much as possible. Firing through the propeller hub was the plane's heaviest armament, a 20mm HS-404 autocannon. It was fed by a 60 round drum magazine, which would typically be expended quite quickly considering the weapon fired at 570 to 700 RPM. Additionally, Two MAC-34 M39 machine guns were located in each wing. The M39 was the belt-fed version of the original MAC-34 aircraft machine gun, which had initially used drum magazines. The 7.5mm projectiles were fired at 1200 to 1450 RPM. With a higher ammunition provision of 850 rounds per gun, the machine guns could be kept firing much longer than the cannon. The VG-33 also featured the standard radio of the French Air Force at the time, the RI-537. The trials undertaken from July of 1939 to March of 1940 gave a very good impression of the arsenal of VG-33, which would be reasonably considered the best French single-engine fighter of the era. At its optimal altitude of 5,200 meters, the VG-33 could reach a maximum speed of 558 kilometers an hour. This was faster than the newest French fighter of the time, the D520, by about 20 km per hour. A takeoff speed would be of about 135 km an hour, with a takeoff distance of about 500 meters. The landing speed was 125 km an hour. The plane's climb rate was also a strength of the design. 
it could reach 1,000 meters in 1.17 minutes, 2,000 in 2.34, 5,000 in 6.26, and 8,000 in 13.26. The plane had an operational ceiling of roughly 9,500 meters. The VG-33 had a maximum range of 1,060 kilometers with its fuel fuel load of 400 liters. At an altitude of 5,000 meters, it had an endurance of 2 hours and 40 minutes. There were trials for additional fuel tanks for the VG-30, which could perhaps have been applied to the VG-33 as well. The plane would then have a fuel load of 600 liters, and it was expected that a VG-33 could travel up to 1,560 kilometers or fly for 4 hours and 20 minutes. Possessing superb performance, forgiving flight characteristics, and good maneuverability, the VG-33 was a great fighter for its day. The first report made in September of 1939 found that the plane had excellent and well-balanced control surfaces which were effective at all speeds. Even at low speed, the plane remained very controllable all the way down to the stall speed, which made landings easy. Furthermore, there were no particular imbalance and no risk of the plane losing control and nosing over. Taking off was also not hard on the VG-33. The plane had also no issues keeping a straight trajectory on the runway and was considered very controllable even on the ground. The landing gear was found to be reliable and safe. The only somewhat lacking element was to be found in the plane's brakes, which were perhaps not as powerful as would be appreciated. In comparison to the D520, the VG33 compared favorably in pretty much all areas. This was even more of an achievement when taking into account the weights and power plants of the two planes. The D520's weight was about equal to the VG33. However, it used a more powerful version of the same series of Hispano Suiza 12Y engine, the 12Y49, which produced 90 more horsepower. This, however, did not prevent the VG33 from being faster than the D520, climbing at a higher rate and being more maneuverable as well, while featuring the same exact armament. In other words, the VG-33 would be, by the standards of 1939 and 1940, a stellar fighter, very much able to compete with the newest designs from Germany or Great Britain, the likes of the BF-109E and the Spitfire. The plane would also have enough evolutionary potential to birth a new series of fighters, lasting potentially well into the war. The outbreak of the Second World War in September of 1930 led to Arsenal's fighter, which had been trials for several months, being ordered into production. A first order was placed on the 12th of September for 220 VG-33s. Arsenal de la Aeronautique lacked any facilities suited for mass production. As such, Production of the VG-33 would be undertaken by the SNCAN factory of Sartreville, southwest of Paris. Five days after the first order, an additional 200 VG-33s were ordered, with the fighter being thought of as a good potential replacement for the aging Moran Saunier MS-406. In the following months, orders and scheduled production of the VG-33 would evolve considerably, with the type quickly being seen as a future mainstay fighter for the French Air Force. By late September 1939, it was planned that the first 10 serial production VG-33s were to be delivered in April of 1940, with production gradually rising to 150 planes per month by the autumn. It was already understood that a second assembly line would be required at this point. It was planned to open an assembly line in Michelin's factories of Clermont-Ferrand in the region of Auvergne in southern France. This facility could not produce the VG-33, but one of its derivatives, the VG-32, of which the first were completed in December of 1940. There were plans to set up a VG-33 production chain in Vendée, western France. Production of the VG-33 required a large number of small producers. The aircraft's largely wooden construction meant that a lot of parts could be supplied by cottage industry sources. Nonetheless, production of the plane was quite consuming in terms of resources. To produce a single VG-33, 1,166 kilograms of spruce, 110 kilograms of plywood, 
880 kilograms of steel, 436 kilograms of aluminum and duralumin, and 125 kilograms of magnesium were required. Even if mostly wooden, a large quantity of steel was still consumed in the aircraft's production. The most significant efforts in producing the materials needed to produce the VG-38 were not spent in acquiring any of the steel though, but rather the spruce wood. The French Air Force only had a small reserve, and the wood was also used to manufacture other light reconnaissance and training aircraft, meaning that this available reserve would only be sufficient to provide for about 500 VG-33s. France began to scramble to acquire spruce from foreign sources, such as Canada, the USA, and Romania. Romanian spruce was of lower quality and was to be preserved for training aircraft. In terms of cost, the airframe of the VG-33 without engine or armament cost 630,000 French francs to produce. This was less than the D-520, which cost 700,000, and the MB-152, which cost 800,000. Thus, the VG-33 could be considered to be a fairly economical fighter, though not as much as the much lighter, but less capable, Caldron C-14, born from the same specifications. The first production schedule for the VG-33 evolved considerably over the months. Finally, the first production aircraft would take place on the 21st of April 1940. The next two production aircraft followed in early May. Eventually, Seven production aircraft would be taken into the French Air Force's registry. The aircraft's production and service was cut short by the German invasion of the Low Countries in France, with the production facilities at Sartreville being occupied by German troops around the 14th to 15th of June 1940. The first squadron the VG-33 was supposed to enter service with with the GC-1 over 2, which previously operated the MS-406, far outclassed by the D-520 or BF-109E. This squadron was allocated its first two aircraft, the second and fourth production VG-33s, on the 10th of June 1940. The squadron, already engaged in the campaign, could not allocate any pilots to recover the aircraft. In the end, pilots of a reconnaissance group took them and relocated them from the under threat airport of Villa Coblet near Paris to the far away toulouse francaisal deep in southern France. Production planes number one and number seven were moved to Clermont-Ferrand, where they were supposed to serve as models for the future VG-32 assembly chain. A fifth aircraft was moved to southern France in uncertain conditions. Two VG-33s were reportedly part of an ad hoc defensive squadron created in Bordeaux in June. GCI-55 active from the 17th to the 24th. According to some, they may have been engaged in a few combat missions in the last days of the Campaign of France. Two VG-33s are known to have been captured by German forces on Marinac airfield in Gironde, the same region as Bordeaux. These may have been the same aircraft. Outside of these seven aircraft taken in by the French Air Force, Production at Scans facilities in Sartreville had been picking up steam, and a number of the aircraft were at various stages of production. It appears that a total of 19 fighters have been completed, with 20 more lacking only their landing gear and being near completion. Seemingly, at least 120 more fuselages were at advanced stages of production. Seemingly, at least 120 more fuselages were also at various stages of production. The vast majority of these were sabotaged to prevent advancing German troops from capturing them. Most notably, the completed fighters that had yet to be taken in by the French Air Force were destroyed by the crew of a Pote 540 reconnaissance bomber on the 14th of June using sledgehammers, mere hours before German troops besieged the facilities. This did not prevent the Germans from getting their hands on a few VG-33s. At least one aircraft would be repainted in German colors and tested extensively, most likely at Rechlin Airfield, Germany. According to some sources, the Germans would capture a total of five serial production VG-33s as well as the original prototype. Though the VG-33 was already a very potent fighter by 1940, there were already plans to improve upon it, generally by improving its power plant. A variety of prototypes, 
mostly based on VG33 airframes and given alternative designations as VG33 prototypes, were flown in the spring of 1940 and would have been given Arsenal's new series of fighters a more promising fate, were it not for the German occupation of France. The VG32, developed before the VG33 but never flown, replaced the 12Y31 engine, an American sourced V1710 C15 1150 horsepower engine. A model from the same series of engines would be fitted to the American P40 Warhawk fighter. While also being more powerful than Hispano Suiza 12Y, the most significant advantage of the Allison engine was that it would relieve France's strained aircraft engine industry. By producing the relatively easy to build VG33 airframe and giving it an engine that would not strain the local industry, France would have a fighter that would be comparatively requiring less work hours. The fifth VG33 prototype airframe was supposed to receive the Allison engine and be the VG32 prototype. However, the engine was not delivered before the armistice, and as such, the prototype was never flown. Nonetheless, the VG32 had been ordered for serial production. Production was to be set up in Michelin's facilities of Clermont-Ferrand. It was hoped that the first dozen would be delivered in December of 1940, with 25 to be manufactured in January 1941, 40 in February, 70 in March, 100 in April, and 150 monthly from May 1941 onwards. This obviously never materialized, as it was never flown. There is no good way to estimate the VG32's performance. The Allison engine reportedly required lengthening the engine cover by 42 centimeters and may have made the engine somewhat heavier. However, its significantly higher power output may still have resulted in the VG32 being at least comparable, if not superior, to the VG33. The first VG33 derivative to take flight would be the VG34. Built using the second VG33 prototype airframe, the VG-34 mounted a more powerful version of the Hispano Suiza 12Y engine, the 12Y45. Producing 960 horsepower, this was enough to give the VG-34 a maximum speed of 576 km per hour at 6,000 meters and likely improve upon its climb rate as well. The VG-34 had its first flight on the 20th of January 1940. It appears to have been at an airport near Toulouse by the armistice with its fate unknown. The VG-35, made from the fourth prototype airframe, received a Hispano Suiza 12Y51 engine producing 1,000 horsepower. Sadly, it is a lot more elusive than the VG-34. Its recorded performances do not appear to have been known, nor do any photos survive, despite the VG-35 having its first flight on the 25th of February 1940. The plane was known to have been in Orléans by the time German forces captured the city. Its further fate is unknown. The VG-36 could be said to have been a more mature version of the VG-35. Using the same 12Y51 engine, the VG-36 was not built from a converted VG-33 airframe and instead had a new one, incorporating a number of changes. Its radiator was wider but presented a lower profile, and it was more integrated into the fuselage in an effort to reduce drag. Taking its first flight on the 14th of May 1940, the VG-39 could reach 590 kilometers at 7,000 meters. Very satisfactory in terms of its performance, it appears to have been scheduled to replace the VG-33 on the production lines at some point. As for the prototype, it was reportedly withdrawn to an airfield in La Ruche sur yonne during the campaign before being destroyed to avoid capture. A further development of the VG-36, the VG-37, was never built. Featuring a supercharger and modified for long-range operations, the VG-38 was never built either. This was supposed to feature an improved 12Y engine, the exact model being unknown. The VG-39 was the most advanced model that took flight. Its main improvement was in terms of its power plant. It received an advanced Hispano Suiza 12Y89 engine with an output of 1,200 horsepower. It appears that this engine did not allow for a cannon firing through the propeller hub in this version. To somewhat compensate for this, the wings were redesigned keeping the same surface area by having a vastly modified structure which enabled for the mounting of additional MAC-34 machine guns in each wing. 
Taking its first flight on the 3rd of May 1940, it could reach an impressive 625 kilometers at 5,750 meters. A very well-performing plane for the time, the VG-39 was, as the VG-36, intended to enter production. This, however, would likely have been in the form of an improved version still on the drawing board by 1940. Designated as the VG-39BIS, this improved VG-39 would have featured an even more powerful Hispano Suiza 12Z17 engine, producing 1,600 horsepowers and allowing for a 20mm HS404 to fire through the propeller hub, with the six wing machine guns being retained. This improved version would have also incorporated a lower and widened radiator design similar to the one found in the VG-36. It would likely have been a very high-performing aircraft, but it stayed on the drawing board due to the German occupation of France. As for the VG-39 prototype, its eventual fate is unknown. As can be seen, the VG-33 was an aircraft with promising performance and an already well-developed series of variants which have guaranteed the aircraft good evolutionary potential. Had France not been knocked out of the war by 1940, it is likely that the Arsenal series would have become for France what the Spitfire was to Britain or the BF-109 was to Germany, a mainstay able to evolve and remain relevant for the entirety of the conflict. This promising future was cut short by German wings, track and feet occupying France in 1940. Nonetheless, the armistice regime, known as Vichy, continued some studies upon the base of the VG-33. A few of the fighters, seemingly five production models, as well as the original prototype, were indeed relocated to the unoccupied part of France at the end of the 1940 campaign. Though they were not put into service, they appear to have been taken as a basis upon which to continue working on future fighters. Under the Vichy regime, studies would continue leading to the VG-40, 50, and then 60. The definitive aircraft designed by 1942 would have featured larger 16.25 square meter wings and a completely redesigned fuselage which had little in common with the old VG-33. It would also feature a new version of the Hispano Suiza 12Z engine. Study stopped after the occupation of the unoccupied part of France in November of 1942 would resume after the liberation of France with a VG-60 fitted with a German Jumo 213E 1750 horsepower engine being considered. This would have been a fighter vastly different from the original VG-33. Armed with 8 wing mounted B2 Browning 12.7mm machine guns and a cannon of unknown model firing through the propeller hub, it would have weighed up to 5 tons and was expected to reach over 700 kilometers per hour. This would never materialize as Arsenal would end up manufacturing a version of a pre-war project in the form of the tandem engine VB-10. The design bureau would also design some jet fighters in the form of the VG-70 and VG-90, though these would not result in any Arsenal aircraft being adopted by France before the bureau was absorbed into the larger SACAN in December of 1954. The Arsenal VG-33 was a particularly interesting French piece of equipment. Having its roots in a venture by Arsenal de l'Aeronautique, in designing the VG-30 light fighter, the type would evolve into a solid plane by the 1930-1940 time period. Having both promising performance and evolutionary potential, the VG-33's future was cut short by the German invasion, which happened right as the very first production aircraft were taking their first flights. Even more so than the D520, the VG-33 arrived too little and too late and couldn't provide the French Air Force with an aircraft able to compete with Germany's BF-109. It has since become a fairly mystified piece of French engineering. An elegant fighter with a sleek design, it has become a sort of ambassador for the large variety of advanced military equipment which France was to field by 1940 but never got the chance. In this fashion, it is not too different from the Somua S-40 and B-1 Terror tanks, as well as the MAS-40 rifle in the psyche of French military enthusiasts. This concludes our look into the lesser known but fascinating series of Arsenal single-engine fighters. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. 
You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article, which is linked in the description. Until next time, keep us in your sights.